My name is Mark Pallas. Uh, I live in Berlin at the moment, and I am a writer, a publisher, and a civil servant. At the moment, I've got two different jobs, and they're quite different, actually. One of them is a civil servant, so I work for the government helping out on the response to coronavirus. I do that half the time. And then the other half of the week, I work writing and publishing books. In particular, I focus on children's books that help kids up to about the age of eight learn a second language. So I'm going to focus mainly on my work as a publisher of books. And the best thing for me about doing that is that I get to have an idea for a book or something that I want to achieve. And then it's just down to me to do everything to take it out of my head onto a page and then into uh, a form that it can go into somebody else's head, which is by a book. And so, yeah, that for me is the best thing that I can, I can somehow take this thing that exists in my brain and then poof, send it into your brain, just like that. If I think back to when I was, I don't know, about 13, 15, something like that, I always had a passion for stories and creative stuff. And I didn't end up following through with it. I went and studied law and did other things. But it always stayed with me, that idea that I wanted to help uh, share ideas, bring people together. Uh, I'd always had a, been really passionate about, about languages. And so when it came to having a bit of time to start up some stuff, I said to myself, right, I want to bring these things together. I want to bring together my love of languages and my love of stories. And then poof, I had my light bulb moment. And then it was just a question of a lot of hard work to bring it from that idea to the reality of having books in the shops in the UK and around the world. So when I think back to the subjects that I studied at school, it was a tricky, uh, tricky decision for me to pick what to do because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. In my mind somewhere, I thought I probably wanted to be a lawyer just because everyone has said you could be a lawyer. Uh, and I didn't really think much beyond that. Uh, and there were all these jobs I never really knew existed until I uh, got a bit older. Uh, and so I, I picked stuff, I tried to pick stuff that I thought I would enjoy. So I studied um, the usual stuff at GCSE. I think as far as options go, I chose French. And then when it came to A-levels, I did English, history and French. Uh, and I just picked subjects because um, I, I thought I would find them interesting. Um, I thought they were things that suited my personality. I was never particularly um, excited about maths. Uh, now, I'm a bit older, I wish I'd probably had done a bit of maths, but um, at the time I thought, yeah, I really want to do these kinds of subjects where you answer them by answering essays and you can get into stuff like that. And so I, that, that's why I picked them. And after that, I studied law at university. It depends really what you consider speaking it properly. Uh, so I studied French at school, so I can speak that, that's not too bad. Uh, and then I can speak Italian. My wife's family is Italian, and so I learned that uh, when I was living in Rome. And then I can speak German because I live in Berlin at the moment, and so I can speak some German. And all these languages I can speak enough to kind of have a, a bit of a chat. I would struggle to write a proper essay, but I can chat with people in the street. Um, now, a few more. My father's Greek, so I can speak a bit of Greek. And uh, because I speak Italian and French, I can also understand Spanish here and there. Basically, my Spanish is just talking Italian and French type words with a Spanish accent. So it's a bit of a cheats, a cheater's Spanish. And then those are my main languages. And then beyond that, I love to learn loads of different phrases and expressions in other languages, all kinds of languages. Uh, and so there, Maybe you could say another 10 languages, but just really enough to say a joke or maybe a little song. So if I meet somebody from Sweden, I can say something to them or this kind of stuff. I, I just, I, for me, I really love acquiring little bits of language because it, it gives me a real thrill. So for me, the best thing and really the main reason why I learn languages in the first place is about the ability to connect with people. So people often say, 
Um, what's the point of learning French if I'm never going to go to France? I understand that. I understand that. But there is something absolutely magical about speak to someone in their own language and either, you know, if you tell them a joke or you uh, just say a word that they recognize, you can see in their eyes this sort of spark goes off and they really feel appreciated. Um, there's a connection that you build with people and you don't get it in any other way apart from by speaking the same language as other people. And so for me, that that connection is is, is the best thing. I'll give you one example. When I was um, 18, I went to volunteer and do work in Uganda and we were meeting our Ugandan counterparts and we had to introduce ourselves. All my friends stood up and they said, hello, my name's John, I'm from London and somebody else stood up and said, oh, I'm from so-and-so, I'm from here, I'm from there. And it was a bit of a boring, um, a boring, very formal session. And I said to myself, you know, what can I do? How, 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 what am I going to say when it's my turn to stand up? And so I checked with the neighbour next door to me and I asked him a little question. And then it got to my turn and they asked me, who, who, who are you? And I stood up and I said, Oliocha Mukamawambe, which means greetings, my esteemed colleagues. And suddenly, just because I'd said it in a language that they recognized, everybody went, woo! -hoo! And we would, you know, I got a rig round of applause and it just, it broke the ice in a way that you don't get if you don't make that effort to speak someone else's language. And just from there, Oh, it was like everyone just sighed and let out a bit of a breath. Oof, let's have a chill out now. And so it just, it's, it's those kind of moments where you can connect with people by talking to them in their own language. That's where that expression comes from. Oh, he really spoke my language. You know, it's that, it's that sense of it. It's that connection. And for me, that's the, that's the real magic. Definitely, I've got better friends. I'll give you an example. When I, I wasn't originally going to learn Italian. Uh, and I had a job in Rome. I was working for the United Nations as an anti-corruption investigator. And I didn't need to speak uh, Italian for my job, uh, but I had some a group of friends who my wife had introduced me to, and they were all friends with each other, and I was the odd one out. And so they would sit there with their cappuccinos and everything else in the, in the cafes chatting. And because I was there, they had to speak English. And I felt so embarrassed about it. I felt, oh my God, I'm, I'm spoiling these guys fun. You know, English isn't their first language. I really felt uh, embarrassed about it. So I said to them, you know, don't worry, just talk Italian. I'm going to catch up. And so I made it my mission to, to catch up. And I, I wasn't trying to become fluent. I just wanted to have enough to be able to uh, you know, tell them some jokes. And so I went on eBay, I bought some CDs, secondhand CDs and started to learn some basic sentences. And it was amazing because there was, you know, so many of the languages were, the, were so many of the words were the same. It's, is it possible? È possibile? It's not possible. Non è possibile. And I was like, hang on a second, this is easy. And so suddenly, slowly, I started to build up my confidence and, and, and I really got some good um, friends through that. And I think if I hadn't spoken the language, we wouldn't have had the same degree of, of connection that we have. So that's one thing. Another thing that I've got out of learning languages, I think, is it's a bit of a sense of, of purpose. Uh, so my father, as I said, is Greek. Uh, my wife's uh, got an Italian family connection. We live in Berlin at the moment, and I really am very proud of being an international European person. And I think that engaging with languages and embracing uh, you know, multiculturalism and everything else is, is so, so important. And then also moving beyond just European languages, other languages around the world too, that's really, really crucial. And so one of the things I wanted to do with my book series was give people the chance to learn languages that they wouldn't otherwise speak, these sort of small languages where you don't really get many books like Maltese or these kinds of things. And so I really uh, found a sense of, of purpose really in helping to get people to find that spark of fun find that spark of fun and so that's really what i what i love to do and so it's um i'm so pleased that i studied languages at school and that i had the courage to really engage in languages even when it was tough and even when i couldn't understand what people were saying i some little voice inside me was saying carry on keep going you'll get there and even now my italian is not particularly good but it's good enough to have a chat 
make people laugh, understand 70% of the conversation. And that's, it's fine by me. I'll get better slowly, but there's no rush. When I was about 20, after I'd finished at university, I wasn't quite sure what to do. And so I went to volunteer on a legal aid clinic that was in Egypt. And I turned up uh, at the professor's house and I knocked on the door and I started my chat with her. And I said, tell me about this legal aid clinic. And she looked at me and said, well, you're the legal aid clinic. And I went, okay, all right then, I will, uh, I'll do my best. And so we had a whole load of people who were seeking asylum in Egypt and they needed uh, a lawyer to represent them. Now, what happens in that situation is you've got people who you, uh, you don't speak the same language and you have to find out from them these very, very personal, traumatic details about why they left their country, all these really difficult topics. And to do that, you have to build some kind of a rapport with them. And of course, I didn't, I didn't speak Arabic or other languages that, that, that they spoke. And so that was my challenge was, was how to do that. And so what I discovered was I wanted to try to learn a few words in their language. And so we had from, uh, clients, for example, from, from Sierra Leone. And so when they came in, I had done my homework. And so I said to them, oh, I know Sabi, talk, talk Creole, fine, fine, which means I can't talk Creole very well. And then they would laugh and they would, you know, and just that little moment of um, connection through language just was enough to get a little bit of a bond to get us started and to give us the, the impetus to really move forward and have these difficult conversations about why they'd left in the civil war and all these sort of sad stories. But I think that for me, that that moment of connection that we created through through those um, exchanges in their own language. And again, it was nothing more than what I've said to you there in, in different languages, depending on where the client was from. But just that little bond um, was just enough to, to make them go, okay, this is a nice person. They they speak my language, you know, they're, they're on the same wavelength as me. And it really um, made that sense of connection. And even if I couldn't say anything else, uh, it just was enough to get us to get us started and help us move forward. In terms of people that inspired me, I have to say my teachers were not particularly inspiring. No offense to my teachers um, because they tried really hard, they followed the syllabus, but verb endings, well, all that kind of stuff, I just, it just it didn't really, um, it didn't really get me going very well. But I had a friend who spoke French and had some cassettes back in the day. Yeah, yeah, I know, cassette tapes. Anyway, he had some cassettes of a guy called MC Solar. I don't know if you can, you can find videos of MC Solar on, on YouTube. He's a French um, rapper who does these amazing samples and then he does these raps over the top. And, and he played them, he said, you know, check this out. And so we listened to MC Solar and I was like, wow, this is really, really good. I wish I had a clue what he was talking about. And of course I had no, I had no clue what he was talking about. Uh, and then uh, in those days you could fold out the, it's called the inlay card of the, of the, of the uh, cassette and it had all the lyrics in there. And so really small. So I'd sit there and it, kind of like trying to figure out what it was he was saying and match up the sound and trying to rap along with him, which was very, very embarrassing. Um, but if you think about it, what I was doing was I was doing a lot of French homework but it didn't feel like homework. It felt like I was, you know, I was trying to unlock the secrets to what this guy was saying, figuring out what his message was. He seemed like a really good guy. I wanted to understand what he what he was trying to tell people, um, and um, and so and that was was my inspiration really. Just and so I think what's what's crucial is you know finding your inspiration too. So if you're the kind of person that maybe finds languages, if you love grammar, then fantastic, uh, full respect to you, uh, you're, you're better than me. Uh, but if, if you find grammar a bit dull, or if somehow you're not sure whether languages are right for you, then you've got to find that thing that is 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 the thing that brings it open for you. So let's say, I don't know, you're really into sport, and you can go on, let's go say you go on YouTube and you look at some the funniest French football commentators, or you're studying Spanish or Portuguese, and you can, watch some Brazilian football commentators go crazy, or you can watch people doing commentary about other Olympic sports that you like. You can, if you're learning other languages, you can find some pop music that you like, um, or I don't know, listen to other people's nature documentaries in other languages. There's so many different ways to find things um, that, 
that, that resonate with you and that f make you feel like somehow it's it's relevant you know uh, it could be a could be a social cause that you like maybe there's some instagrammers that, that have got really important messages that you want to follow them about different stuff there's, there's all these kinds of things but just the, the key thing is to look beyond your own borders around the world because there's people doing inspiring things all around the world and if you can find them speaking another language that and they're doing it, even if you can't understand what they're saying slowly eventually gradually you will understand it and and it'll um, it'll really help bring the language alive for you my job i've got at the moment where i'm writing the children's books um it, it, it kind of did it, it helped me become familiar with 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 french and also with the structure of languages and it, it gave me this passion for languages and so that in a way carried on through which is why i'm now doing the work that I'm doing on my fabulous lost and found uh, books. But more practically, uh, one way I used it was after I'd uh, done my GCSEs and A-levels, the very first job I got after university was in the House of Commons. And I was working in what's called an all-party parliamentary group. And those are groups of MPs that come together from all parties to work on a particular issue that they, they're passionate about. And mine was about Rwanda, Congo and Burundi. Uh, under this MP called Una King. And so there I had to use my French to um, to talk to people from the from the region. And it was it was difficult because you know Congolese French is is slightly different to the, the French the French of France. Um, I'd also when you're talking it in a professional way it's it's also tough because it's faster, there's lots of terms that you don't understand. I had a rather difficult experience once when um, one of the vice presidents of the Congo came to the House of Commons and I had to meet them and they were talking at me very fast and I have to admit that after a while I had lost total track of what they were saying and literally I had absolutely no idea what they were talking about and then he said to me mais qu'est-ce que vous pensez what do you think? And I went, oh my goodness me, I have not got a clue what you just said. And so I had to think of my feet and I couldn't say, sorry, I haven't been following you for the last five minutes. So I, I just, I said to the, uh, I said to the guy, ça c'est la question, monsieur le vice-président. Et ça c'est une question difficile. I said, that's the question, Mr. Vice President. And it's a difficult question. And he just said, c'est vrai. It's true. And then he carried on talking and I went, whew, saved. Uh, and so that was so that was a that was a definitely a close call. But had I not done the GCSE and A-level French, I wouldn't have um, got the job in the first place because you needed it. I think you didn't need to speak it fluently because it wasn't a job where you were talking in French every day. But to be aware of French um, was, was definitely a plus. So it, it helped me in that very direct way, straight out of uh, university in my very first job. What I struggled with a little bit was um, you know, doing A-level French. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, I think there's a point when you learn language eventually where it starts to come together, you know? And my teachers used to say to me, don't worry, eventually it'll start to come together. And I was like, I don't think so, because I was sitting there with a dictionary and I was trying to read this, like a, some old-fashioned story about something rather than I was like, oh, this is really, really, um, you know, mind, mind numbing, and um, and I just I really, you know, I got frustrated with it, you know, and I was, I, I think I was, I wasn't doing particularly well in terms of the grades, and I was, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to get an A. Um, and, uh, and, I, and, I, and I wasn't at that level. I was really getting frustrated because I just I didn't have the vocab, uh, the grammar wasn't up to scratch, and I just like I couldn't really. Um, I just it wasn't all coming together, and so I, that was definitely, definitely frustrating. Um, and you know, and I didn't believe the teachers when they said it'll all come together. But you know, there's no option really when you're doing an A-level, you just got to keep on going. Um, I didn't want to get a, a super low grade or anything. So I just, I, I pushed on and then, you know, when I found this MC Solar stuff and kept on going and I had my little stickers up on the walls and just kept on acquiring that 
that vocab and, and then eventually it's very annoying because the teacher was right it did it did come together and suddenly oh you know what I, I'm not I just found myself not having to try so hard that was that was I think was the difference instead of every sentence being an effort and every sentence that you have to say you got to think how am I going to construct the sentence you know it's somehow it just started to come out a bit and it's just through keeping on going keeping on practicing keeping on doing it and um and that I think was the was it was the hardest point in it but it was the it was the best lesson because it, it reminded me that if you carry on and if you just just speak it just keep on going it'll be fine and what that's taught me is going forward when i'm doing other languages let's say german it's a it's a difficult language it's got a really different um structure and you know speaking french and spanish or italian it doesn't help you at all there i said to myself right you know i'm not even going to try to do the grammar on this thing i'm just going to go straight in with with the chat and uh, and i just sort of persisted with that and, and i've some people might say it's the cart before the horse i think it's the right way around i you know i speak the language i get confidence with it and eventually i i realize oh i've actually learned some grammar because i know that you wouldn't say it this way and you wouldn't say it that way and then eventually i figure it out uh, and so i'm kind of i build that bit of the of the building first and then i realize that oh yeah that's that's the grammar and those are the endings of the verbs rather than starting with the verbs and then trying to build my sentence from the ground up. I understand why it's taught that way, which is fine. Um, but I think that um, it's just having that confidence, keeping on going. And if you are, I don't know, let's say you're in the middle of your GCSEs, you're in the middle of your A-levels, and you're feeling like, oh, it's just not coming together. All I would say is just keep on plugging away at it. Immerse yourself as best you can, whether it's like podcast, get the headphones on, watch, change the language settings on Netflix or something, and just really just try to immerse yourself and just let it wash over you. And eventually it will come together, whether it comes together a lot or a little, whether you're an A or a C, it really, it doesn't matter because ultimately what matters is your ability to have that connection that I talked about. And so it's just about being good enough to have some fun with it and to feel like you can use it to make people smile and, and to build connection with people and, and just to feel like you're a part of the whole world where everyone speaks all these different languages and, and by speaking more languages you you get to be a member of that club which is a cool club so for me the very best and most important thing uh, that gets me excited about language learning is the ability to have a connection with somebody that i've that i've never met and so for me you know it's just just that look in their eyes when you when you say something and they're they're totally surprised so you know i meet somebody there they say that they're swedish and then i suddenly start singing the uh, Swedish entry into the Eurovision Song Contest 1992 or something like that. And then, you know, suddenly they're like, what? where's that come from? And then they, they might say to me in Swedish, do you speak more Swedish? And I say, oh, no, sorry. But anyway, there it is. You, you, you've got your bond. You've, you, you started on the journey. And so for me, that's so, that sense of, um, that spark is so crucial that it's become the central plank of, of all the books that are right helping kids learn languages. And so, you know, you might think that if you're a child and you want to learn a language, the most important things that you need to learn are the grammar and the, the sentences and all these key things. And I think, bah, forget about that. What you really want to learn is something that is is fun. And so in I've, I've got these books that, that I write um, called The Fabulous Lost and Found and The Little Something Mouse, The Little Spanish Mouse, The Little French Mouse. And there, what you've got is a, um, it's the story of a mouse who only speaks, let's say, French or Spanish or Maltese or Arabic or whatever it might be, Swahili. Um, but they only speak that one language and they've lost their hat. And so one of the key sentences that you learn in another language is, I've lost my hat. Now, when in your life are you ever going to lose your hat? Do who even wears a hat? And if you have worn a hat, when are you actually going to lose it? And then if you do lose it, do you really need to tell someone you've lost it in another language? Probably the chances of ever using this phrase are almost zero. But the chances of using this phrase and making somebody smile are 100%. So the reason that I picked it as a, as a thing is because, know, let's say you've got a, a great grandma who was uh, Turkish or something, um, and, and you want to just you know touch on that sense of your heritage. You've got a friend who's Polish and you want to give them a thrill. You know, whatever it might be, you just have a little bit of a magic bit of the language. And for me, it's it's the phrase, I've lost my hat. Um, and then just being able to tell them that, 
I've lost my hat. And they're going to go, what? Number one, where did you learn that? And two, what are you talking about? It's just, it's just really funny, I think. And, and, and this, the power of laughter is, is so important. And just to build that connection um, is, is for me the, the secret sauce. So if you're doing any languages, I would really recommend uh, jokes, um, funny stuff, um, silly things, nonsense. It's, it's uh, you know, it's, it's really worthwhile because it just, it helps make it fun and it makes it more fun to, to speak and it's more funny for the people that you are talking to. Number one is about your mindset. So, you know, what's your mindset? It, it, are, are you thinking that you're going to be a simultaneous translator? There's people who, you know, you've seen them at the, at the United Nations, everyone's got their ear pieces in, there's a room up there, and these people are simultaneously translating exactly right with all the nuances of what's being said. You know, if, if that's your goal, fantastic, and I, I applaud you, go and be a simultaneous translator, it's a great job. You learn loads of cool stuff, but if if you're you're just studying it because you think languages are, is a, are interesting or fun, then I would say don't worry about the simultaneous translation or the you know being a literary critic in another language. Don't worry about all that stuff. Uh, focus on just understanding it. Focus on the fun. Focus on accent, because for me, accent is really really crucial to unlocking a language if you it's about for me it's about inhabiting another world okay so you know let's say we're we're doing uh, i'm say french just because it's a, it's, a, it's a commonly studied language in, in the uk but let's say we're doing french and you're on the class and you know you, you're going for it and you do the old je voudrais un pomme or whatever it might be with the with the full-on zero effort for uh french accent it, number one it, it, it's a bit boring and number two, you haven't got the same magic. You haven't got the same kind of like excitement if you sort of sit there going, mm, je voudrais un bon. It's, it's, it's obviously I'm being a bit silly there, but you know, it's, it's more fun. You can almost hear the accordions and the berets. You can smell the baguette. Oh, c'est magnifique, ce baguette. Mm, le délicieux. It's, it's just, it, 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 for me at least, it, it suddenly makes it more exciting. And I have to admit that when I studied at school and it was my turn to read, um, my classmates were like, oh God, Mark's gonna read again. He always goes over the top and I would be sitting there going, whoa, and, um, but, but it was fun, you know, and it made it, made, it made it feel worthwhile for me. It made it feel uh, not like so much of a struggle. It made it feel like I was speaking proper French and I don't know if they still do this, but you know, you get marks for your accent, and and if and they're really easy marks to get. It's just about giving it a go. Um, so those are those are a couple of top tips. One more top tip I think is, um, yeah, not not worrying about the level that you get to, and and really feeling um, proud of all of the language achievements that you get. So even if let's say you um, maybe you drop out. Of the language studies, um, maybe you don't manage to pass the exams. You know, I really would urge you not to let that colour your experience of language. You know, what you what you gained through that study is fantastically useful, not just for now, but for the rest of your life. Uh, and so, you know, whatever you do, uh, whether you pass or fail, get an A or anything else, I, I would just encourage you to really feel proud of yourself for engaging with the language, keep it with you throughout the rest of your life, and when you have a bit of time you want to listen to a podcast or something just go on ebay buy some secondhand language cassettes or listen to stuff and do some whatever app you might prefer give it a go and all the stuff that you learn will come flooding back and it will really help you or even just take what you've learned and and have it have a try with it and you know when you're in pret and there's a french server just you know try chatting to them say yeah merci beaucoup or whatever it might be um and it will really um reap uh, dividends People are always talking about the fact that we've got, you've got Google Translate, DeepL, whatever it is that you use. I mean, there's gonna be like simultaneous digital translation. There's definitely apps I think you can, uh, you can talk into and it talks it out. So is there any point uh, learning a foreign language in that situation? And I guess you're gonna know what I'm gonna say, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, oh, of course there is, definitely. Um, I'll give you an example, right? So. Coding is uh, super super hot, right? Everyone, there's a, the government's even spent over more, more than 100 million pounds in the UK on a 
on a coding center for excellence. Everyone's like, you've got to learn coding. You've got to learn coding. But you know what? Coding, Python, the main language of coding is spoken fluently, if you want, by less than less people than speak Kenya Rwanda. So in terms of languages, it's a bit niche. And what you have to remember with coding, at least, is that what you get from coding isn't the ability to be a fluent coder and you can only go and be a coding person. What you get is the ancillary benefits, right? You get to understand about logic, how computers work, how programs are put together, how things are sequenced, why things happen in the way that they do. And that's worthwhile. So even if you never want to be a programmer, coding is still a worthwhile thing to do. But what people don't say so much is that exactly that same benefit is true of learning a language. So there's so many studies that show you that the simple fact of learning a language grows your brain. That's a, the, the short way of putting it, but yeah, there's trust all these PhDs and professors who've said it is a really good thing. But it just, I mean, you, you can imagine it, right? You, you're trying to learn how to say something in more ways than one. You can actually almost feel these neural networks firing, new connections growing in your brain because you are building the ability to say things in a new way. You're building the ability to hotwire your brain so that you can think in a different way, but also you're building other skills to do with empathy, to do with seeing things from other points of view, to do with feeling like you're part of a, a bigger world and you're understanding the connections between different cultures. Okay, so, you know, English, for example, is very similar to other languages. And when you start to trace and see the way that the different words flow between different languages, it's, it's really, really crucial. And so I think regardless of whether there's an instantaneous um, app that will make it all worthwhile, that's all fine. And you can use that if you want to. But what that will never get you is it will never get you that smile that will never get you the ability to unless of course it goes wrong and you want to say something like uh, where's the chip shop and it says you know i need to go to the loo or something and i'm sure that would that would raise a laugh but on normal levels if you if you want to have that personal connection which i'm saying is one of the key reasons for doing it to really be able to have a link with people and to just to, just to really feel them in a way, whether it's your family, extended family or, or friends or, or friends that you may yet make when you're traveling around or seeing other people. You know, the, the language is, is, the, is the crucial bit and it doesn't matter if you can't speak it well. Just the fact of trying, just that fact of trying is enough to make that connection and that's where the real value for me lies. So yeah, forget about the app. Just go on there, learn some phrases, and then poof, you're gonna get the results, I think.